Hello everyone, in this short video we're going to talk about and see how I make inexpensive, dirt cheap forests, whole forests. Hello everyone, welcome to MJ Hobby Corner. Uh, First and foremost, I would like to say that I, I'm sorry, we've been a little bit behind this month and uh, Julie and I have been sick over the past a week, a little over a week now. And uh, one day we'll feel good and then the next day we're feeling miserable again. So uh, I know that a lot of people have commented and saying that they're experiencing the same thing. There's some really bad flu and, and stuff uh, going around. So uh, to everyone, if you have been hit, by any of this uh i hope that you recover quickly i hope that you're everyone's okay uh julie is definitely a lot better i'm recovering but we still need some time we're not 100 percent there yet but today finally and today is wednesday uh i started these projects uh last week and had to stop um and basically today wednesday i felt good enough that i could at least finish my forests and uh, i have a lot of plans for big gains in the future with small scale miniatures so i'm building a lot of mesh units i'm building uh some new terrain because i have no terrain for small scale stuff and i'm waiting until the big studio and we're in my winter quarters this is my smaller satellite studio uh, but i'm waiting for the big studio to open and once that opens, I'll have all the space I need for big tables, for big projects. Uh, right now, the studio is dark and cold and and, and clammy, but uh, that'll change soon, as soon as the weather improves. And the material list, very simple, some plastic canvas. This is my six pack go-to from Walmart. Uh, this canvas is about a little over $3 for six sheets. This is great stuff. Uh, you can get any brand that you have available in your area, whatever you have available in your area. Uh, this is pretty good stuff. We're going to use this. Uh, some barbecue sticks. Uh, these are the thicker barbecue sticks. Uh, the and, and I have some dowels mixed in here as well. But here's one of the barbecue sticks. These will be very important. Uh, so you'll need a good pack of these. And depending on how many little forests you want to do, you may need two packs. Okay, so we'll consider that in the budget. Some hot glue. I will be using the hot glue gun. Uh, I'm using my wire cutters. Uh, these are good to cut the dowels, but whatever you have to cut those dowels. I use my old good old wire cutter and some scissors just to cut the... the uh, mesh with i don't use this exacto blade as much uh because i have pain in my hands so the scissors work best also we will need some craft bond spray glue uh that's for a later step this could be optional okay uh you don't have to necessarily get this i like to use it because i sprinkle the optional sawdust now there's a lot of ways to get sawdust uh my brother does a lot of woodworking so i am uh, privileged enough to get a lot of sawdust from him makes me very happy um, but you can make your own sawdust and i do have uh, other ways that i make uh, sawdust this was one of julie's old pillows and she has given it to me and i'm very excited because this pillow has wow lots and lots and lots of this now this is the coarse stuff with this you can make clouds you can make explosions, you can make uh, musket fire, you know, musket, musket smoke to, to mark your, your firing. And you can make canopies for trees. And this is excellent. This one's really nice and coarse. So here is the uh, board that I'm working on. And you see the blobs of forest that are already cut. So if you have a plan, uh, maybe that you've drawn already or something, you can go by that. Otherwise, you just cut random pieces of forest, uh, however, however you want to make them. They could be oblong, they could be uh, rounder and shorter. 
Uh, I usually like to lay them out on my board already so that I have an idea of how they're going to fit. Now I use my wire cutter and I cut <clears throat> a bunch of sticks. Now these are roughly uh, a little over an inch long. If you want more old growth forest, taller uh, trees, you can go a little longer. Uh, we have to remember that this is for like 15 millimeter or so, or 10 millimeter is what I'm using it for. So uh, your scale is going to determine also how long you cut your little sticks uh, and how wide you make them. But I'm going to go with this size. This is a pretty good size for me. And then we'll need to sharpen these a little bit with the exacto knife. This is where I use the exacto knife. Uh, or I could use a pencil sharpener also. I've, I've done that with some of the thicker dowels. Now, and there's my first stick. So what I'm going to do is I will start on the edges first. And I'm going to put these sticks that are necessary to stand the whole thing up like a table, okay? Now, if we look at my piece here, uh, notice how they all are, are glued there. Some of them have Ys. Uh, some of them I'll, I'll add like little branches coming out. Um, but I don't do a lot. I mean, th this project is meant to be quick. Uh, I do have to paint these. You will paint these uh, in the end. You don't want to keep them uh, that color. Um, or maybe you do. I don't know. But basically, you do that. Okay, let's see what I've done here. So we have all along the edges some of the uh, the sticks, which will represent the trees. Uh, on some of them, I put little uh, sticks coming out of the main stick. Uh, this way, it'll uh, give it a little variety. Uh, you will notice that the gaps are kept pretty wide here. And then I usually have a stick right behind the large gap. So when you're looking at it at eye level, model eye level, it looks like there's a lot of trees, okay? And you want them as random as possible. You don't want them in a line so they don't look like they're, you know, horticultured man-made trees or something. Uh, you want them as random as possible. But you notice these gaps and the reason why I like to keep the gaps is that these are areas where my vehicles can go, uh, I can tuck my little tanks or, or units and this will indicate that they are in the forest without actually being like deep in the forest. So this will indicate they're in the forest and any rules that govern that can then take place. Time to do our canopy. So I just uh, rip up clumps of this stuff, okay, uh, unceremoniously and clump them up uh, as best I can with my fingers and then hot glue them all along the edges first. Make sure we cover those edges, okay? If we see here, you see that the edges are all cut, okay? All covered, I mean, I'm sorry. You cover all your edges and then you work inward. Okay, so we have a few clumps here, but you'll notice that they look like clouds, right? They're not yet really like a uh, uh, forest canopy material. So now the secret to this is to add heat. Now I'm going to use my little uh, barbecue grill light lighter. Okay, there you go. And so this was just without the flame even touching the stuff, just kind of doing this motion. Um, you, I, one of the things about plastic mesh that I'm very impressed about is that. Um, obviously if you put direct heat on it it's gonna melt it doesn't melt that easy however I know that this technique works uh, well uh, and it only takes a couple of seconds you're not there for like you know it only takes a couple of passes quick passes and that cotton begins to really like melt and and uh, it becomes stiff and hard one very important thing about this a safety uh, procedure uh, work in a ventilated area this stuff does have chemicals that are not the greatest thing to inhale uh, but very important make sure that you do your uh heat step if you're using the heat step uh with the with the lighter or whatever do that first before applying the stuff never ever apply this stuff and then try to add heat it'll erupt in flames. This stuff is very flammable. So 
please do uh, that step first. Make sure you get all your little cotton uh, the way you want it with the heat or use the heat gun. And do not, uh, once you apply this stuff and apply the sawdust, that's it. Uh, no more heat. You will have to wait a few hours until the stuff really dries if you're going to apply more heat. Do not do it while the stuff is fresh on the cotton because you're just going to get a fireball. Okay, this stuff is very flammable. So that is a safety procedure. We're all adults. This is an adult craft, but it is important to mention. Now, if you don't want to use the heat step and you're not comfortable using an open flame on the stuff, no problem. Uh, you can use this uh, RNG stuff. This is the way I traditionally make my canopies. You got to cut this up into different uh, size pieces. Hot glue that onto the mesh. And then this can be spray painted. It's yellow, but it can be spray painted. And then you can use your uh, sawdust on top of it and everything else. So if you don't want to use the uh, white uh, cottony stuff, because you don't want to apply the heat, use this stuff. Again, if you don't, if you don't mind the sort of uh, if fluffy look to the uh, wood, and you just want to apply glue and no heat, and just apply glue and uh, this sawdust. If you don't want to apply sawdust, it's fine. It's still gonna look uh, pretty cool. Now I think it looks best after the heat treatment and the sawdust and everything else. But again. Uh, do what's best for you and make sure that you observe all safety procedures. Okay, so uh, I've applied some heat to all of the filler that I used. Uh, it's all around the edges. Notice the bottom. Okay, look at it from the side. We can start to see like that forest uh, look developing on it. Okay, uh, I use small clumps of stuff and then big clumps as well okay now i'm going to fill the interior leave these sticks open now any spaces in between the cotton that's okay because i fill that with glue and then sprinkle sawdust in there and uh, believe me you don't after you spray paint everything uh it looks really good so to the top of the canopy layer i add a few sticks to the grid and uh, give them some like a y shape and now i'm just going to add uh, a little bit of this uh cottony material here to make the canopies of those little trees that are okay the forest is now finished and all it needs now is spray paint uh once spray painted uh i go back and i paint these uh little uh, sticks and i usually use like a gray i'll use a combination of grays and browns i paint them in uh different colors this way represents like different species of trees but basically that's it now once all, everything is painted uh put it down on the board and we start to see these woodland areas popping out You can also form a variety of different templates using the mesh, gluing it to give you different uh, shapes. And uh, this one has a hole in the middle. Now remember, all this will be covered with the canopy. And so with that hole, we can have an objective there, have a ship, a transport come in, land, disembark some troops, and then take off and there are your troops in the hole uh like i said there could be a, an objective there or maybe they're just landing there for some protection or the ship could simply hover over the trees the trees are going to be a little irregular uh but if there is a space where it can hover and then the troops just leap off with their jetpacks or whatever it is uh, on the other hand big hole in the middle could be where a big artillery mech is hiding and shooting missiles everywhere so there's a lot of different ways to use these forests and now i gotta find that drop ship i don't know where i put that drop ship now texturing the sticks for this project i'm not texturing 
my little uh, sticks. I'm not doing any bark or anything. I'm going to paint them. I'm going to use a combination of grays for the different uh, little tree barks that are down here. Uh, use a few browns. Paint them in different colors this way. Uh, it, it, it just gives it the idea that there's, you know, different trees growing in this area. I'm not going to texture it. You can, however. Uh, the easiest and fastest ways to use a fine-tipped uh, gun, heat gun, for your hot glue, and very carefully, without burning yourself, you can texture the little sticks. You can even do it before actually applying them if you wanted to. And that gives you a rough texture. I do a lot of quick hot glue texturing uh, on my trees. And this is uh, a technique that I learned from good old DM Scotty, who does, who is the master of the hot glue gun. Uh, he, his videos, uh, he's been around for a long time and his videos, you can watch them on YouTube. He is actually uh, a person who I really, really like his crafts. So uh, that's one thing you can do. Uh, you can also use very carefully an exacto knife and kind of chip the wood a little bit if you want to add a little bit of texture. I'm not doing any of that. Um, th there is also with the Dremel, if you have a Dremel with uh, little uh, special bits for filing, they have these kits of bits uh, where they come in different sizes and you can use that on your Dremel. You can actually chip away. There's even a uh, wood carving bits that you can use and you can actually chip away and make a lot of little uh, indentations in the wood. This is such a small scale though that I, I'm not going to worry about any of that. For me, all I'm going to do is just paint them. That's it. Okay, so the forest is now spray painting uh, and I'm waiting for it to dry and I'm just going to repaint the little trees there. But there's a model's eye view of the forest and uh, it's looking good. I'm using a Rust-Oleum Kenyan green paint and uh, it's a different shade from uh, these other two forests, which is great. That's what you want. You want different shades in your vegetation. And I want to point out this new armature here that's going to be uh, this mesh really works well. So you can uh, make a lot of designs of armature for the forest this way. This one is going over the hill here. It's kind of following the contour of the hill. And yes, I used uh, a couple of boxes underneath to form the hill. So now this will uh, form that contour and it's pretty cool. I do have to do a little dry brushing on the felt and uh, finish up this forest right here. And the other thing I want to point out, if you want to decorate, you know, this old school method of putting books underneath your cloth, uh, it works really, really well. I love this method. This is my old school method. I've been doing it forever. Uh, one thing to decorate the hills so they're not so plain, uh, I put my little vegetation on felt. So this is a felt base, a scatter terrain with felt base, and it's completely flexible. And so it matches the contour of whatever hills uh, you use. And the cool thing is that felt, it doesn't move around as much on cloth. Now, if you're using it on felt, it's, it's even better because felt loves to stick with felt. Okay, so it won't move. And that's that's pretty cool property. Uh, to felt. So I, I like using that and that gives a nice little, um, you know, decoration to the sides of these hills so they're not so plain. Can also add a little bit of uh, craft moss, tiny little bits of craft moss into that mix and it makes it very, very interesting. So uh, that said, I'm going to be finishing this table. Uh, the other thing is that this cloth is I'm actually going to spray paint it a little bit more now that I have it. Uh, but this is this cloth is regular tablecloth from Walmart. It's about five dollars uh, a pack, and it's a tablecloth. And all I did was I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum texture paint. Now it that's expensive paint, so I don't get it very often. But this uh, cloth is about four years old, so that paint. When you texture a cloth with it, forget it. It won't come out. So uh, this is good for making roads. 
you know, which I didn't do on this mat, but that's okay. We can use our felt roads. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to be finishing this up and you guys will see a finished table uh, with the different forests. Uh, check out Scratch Builder Monthly. You'll see it there as well. All right, folks. Well, that's it for this uh, project. Uh, more. I'll be building a lot more of this off camera. And uh, anything interesting, I'll add it into Scratch Builder Monthly. So uh, that's coming out hopefully soon. Like I said, it's going to be behind this month uh, because I was sick. But uh, I will be adding a lot of these kinds of projects into the upcoming Scratch Builder monthlies. Uh, for my patrons, uh, we have a lot of Horizon Wars material coming. I'm discussing all of the books. So uh, if you like Horizon Wars or you want to learn more about Horizon Wars, check out our Patreon. I will have some games here on the channel as well. And I use primarily uh, 10 millimeter stuff with a lot of Scratch Builds for those games. So... Uh, yeah, I got to finish this table and you guys will probably see the finished product at some point. Uh, it's certainly going to show up in the magazine. So uh, thank you very much, folks. And uh, do be safe out there. Uh, watch your health. There is a lot of stuff going around. So watch your health. And uh, I hope everyone is okay. And more importantly, enjoy your scratch building and all this stuff we do, all this building and all this stuff. Really, the main purpose is to enjoy our war games, to enjoy this interesting hobby we call miniature wargaming. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.